Last month, I made the mistake of saying that the best diver Orient makes is the Orient Star Diver. I was wrong, because the best diver that Orient makes is in this box right here that I just got from Tuss Watches. It's the Orient Star 1964 Second Edition, which probably sounds confusing because some of you have probably never heard of the first edition. Since this requires a little bit of a backstory, I'll talk about it as I open it. Now, in the recent Orient Star versus Seiko comparison, a lot of you wound up asking about the 1964 diver from Orient Star. Now, to be honest, I never really paid much attention to the 1964 when it was announced. I remember seeing a picture of it last year when they announced the first version, and it looked pretty much like the regular diver. And since it was a limited edition, I think limited to only 500 worldwide, I just assumed it was a rebadged version of it that had a lot higher price just because it was a limited edition. Which was wrong, because if I'd looked closer, I would have realized that it was actually smaller than this 43 millimeter version. Now that was last year. This year they announced a second edition, which is no longer limited. It's a regular production run. But again, I was thinking that it might just be a rebadged version of this one. So I reached out to Tom over at Tuss Watches, who's been my go-to for all things Orient for a while now. In fact, I got this diver from him, as well as the Orient Star Cheshire. I asked if he'd seen it, if he had an opinion on it, and how it compared to the regular diver. Coincidentally, he just got his first batch of watches in, and he says other than the movement, it's an upgrade across the board. Now, I wasn't exactly planning on buying another expensive diver this year, as the MSRP on these is right around the same as the Seiko 62 Moss, the Marine Master Reduce, the Willard, and I think the brand new versions of the Sumo. But since I knew there was already a lot of interest, I thought I needed to get it just to check it out. Especially since most of these wind up being JDM exclusives, and there's not a lot of info out there about them. And to be clear here, I did buy this. But since Tuss Watches knew I was going to be mentioning them in this video, they did give me a nice discount. So just be aware of that for the sake of transparency. Anyway, let's check it out. Now, as you can see, this is a nicer box than your standard Orients. And I think this is about the same as I saw on the Diver. Actually, let me zoom in a bit. So first off, it comes with an extra rubber strap. Probably nothing too exciting, check that in a second. And here we have the watch. Actually, I'm gonna put gloves on before I touch it. At this point, it's standard practice for me to do this before I get any macro shots. It just helps avoid any smudges you see. Now, the important thing to note here is the size. Let me take this off just to show you. I'll eventually get calipers to measure it, but as you can see, it is substantially smaller. This is like about 43 or 43 and a half. And I believe this is 41, but it might be 40 in the case and 41 at the bezel. I'll have to get my calipers and see. Now, right off the bat, a couple things to note is that this is very similar layout to the original diver. It just has different hands and different set of indices, but you still have that power reserve indicator at the top. And kind of like the Seiko reissues, this is kind of a refresh from an older version. That's why it's the 1964 second edition. And let me get all this packaging off. All right, so that's most of the plastic off and I'll probably intermix this with some close up and maybe some macro shots if I get around to it before publishing this. But it's a beautiful classic looking diver. It's kind of an interesting design. It reminds me of kind of, of a Submariner mixed with a tiny Samurai maybe. In fact, a couple interesting things I've already noticed is that you have polished sides here versus this very grainier brush signs on the other diver. So this is definitely a little more dressy, I guess you could say. Still have drilled lugs, Got nice brushing right there. The bezel action is supposedly one of the big things that's been improved, so let's listen. Eh. It's definitely an improvement, but I'm not sure I'd say it's a huge improvement. There's very little backplate, at least compared to that one. And it is maybe a little bit more defined, but you still have that very Seiko-Orient mute-sounding bezel. 
as opposed to a lot of microband bezels, which are just really clicky. And as you can see, this is the black version. There are two different colorways currently available, this one and a great looking teal. There's also the first version, but since it was a limited release of about 500 units, you're gonna have a hard time finding it. Once people get a good look at the teal, I think that one might be the favorite to buy, but I decided to go with the classic black. As some of you know, I suffer from blue diver syndrome. And at the moment, I actually don't have any black divers. So I was already inclined to get this one in black, but I was also a little concerned that the teal version might look a little too similar to my Glacier Sago. So the black just seemed like an obvious choice, especially if this one turned out to be a keeper. And one quick look at these rubber straps. No spring bars, so it's not quick release, but they're really nice and flexible. I think they look good with the watch. Another important thing is the clasp. This is milled, that's pressed, and that is a massively huge improvement. Bracelet is also very different. It's much more dressier than say the tool watch of the Orient. Different case shape, different dial, but there's a lot here that reminds me of the Marine Master Reduced I recently got. Although I just saw one thing I'm not gonna be a huge fan of, the case back, if you can kind of see it there. It looks good, but it is really polished and that always gets scratched up over time. Let me give you a quickie wrist shot without having the bracelet adjusted. I'll have to double check, but I remember the lug to plug being a little longer, like almost 50, but it doesn't quite look it. I like it. Now it's gonna be a little while before I get around to doing a review. This was kind of an unplanned purchase and I have a few other things I need to get done before I get to this, as well as another trip in a couple of weeks. I'll try to get it done as soon as I can, but in the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to ask down below or email me or DM me on Instagram. And after I get the review done, I'll do at least one comparison video with this one, either against the original Orient Star Diver or the Seiko Marine Master Reduced. Because while this is nice, one of the big questions I think a lot of people are going to have is, is it really worth the price? Or would it be worth it just to get a Seiko of the same price? Or maybe just a couple micro brands? But I'll let you know. So stay tuned for all of that. And as usual, if you have any questions, you have any comments, or just anything you want to ask, feel free to ask down below. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Shane. This is Relative Time. See you next time.